Good morning, everybody. My name is James, and I'm with Track It Forward. Does anybody know where this is? No, France. Oh, France. It's in Oakland. It's the Morecambe Rose Garden. So those that said that, I don't think I heard it. There's a rose garden right down the street, and that's where Track It Forward started. The rose garden depends completely on volunteers to maintain it, and in order to incentivize them, they give out pruning shears if you volunteer 25 hours, and they give you t-shirts if you volunteer 100 hours. However, they want these programs to work. Unfortunately, when you get volunteers and you have all these incentives, if the volunteers don't get those gifts, if they can't see the recognition, then it ends up becoming a leaky bucket and those volunteers end up leaving. And that's where the Rose Garden came to me and a couple other volunteers here, um, we went to some hackathons, and we built a tool for them. It's called Track It Board, and it basically allows volunteers to track their own hours. And they can see their own progress of if they're achieving those go goals or not, so they can keep so they can keep the organization accountable of getting their, their actual gifts that they've been promised. And there's also leaderboards as well, so they get instant recognition. Uh, traditionally, volunteer organizations reward their volunteers once a year at some kind of big dinner or gala. However, with Track It Forward, they can see it at any time of where, like, who's the best volunteer in the last week, the last month, or the last year at any given point. And lastly, we allow volunteers to create events themselves, to send those events to other volunteers so they can get more volunteers volunteering. So instead of a leaky bucket where people are leaving the organizations, we're instead keeping the existing volunteers there and giving them the tools to bring in more volunteers and keep that retention there. However, when we rolled this out, there was a problem. Not everybody has a phone. I know we're so app-centric these days, but when you talk about volunteer organizations and nonprofits, not everybody has phones. So we had to build a more diverse set of technology to actually accomplish uh, the volunteer system that we set out for. So we have widgets. So this is the, the Rose Gardens website. There's a widget right there in the corner that's actually, that allows them to track their own hours. We have our own website as well, where they can track their hours and see their progress. And we have a robust organizer dashboard where the, the organizer can not only generate all the reports that they need, but they can actually track the hours for those individual volunteers who for some reason don't want to use tech, don't have the tech, and so their data can still get into the system. So I know what you're probably thinking right now is that this is just another volunteer management system. There are so many out there. There's ones that are still around that have been built 20 years ago and for some reason we are still using them. And there's new ones out there, They're, they all do different things. But we're not a volunteer management system, no. We, we do very little um, with, with volunteer management. We don't send out newsletters, we don't send out text message, we're not a CRM, we don't do any intelligence. Usually volunteer management systems, they go, oh, we do all this stuff, oh, and here's time tracking right here. And if you guys try to use those time tracking tools, they don't really work. The volunteers don't actually use them. So Track It Forward is only a volunteer time tracking system where volunteers actually track their hours. And you can actually get the data you need to run the incentives programs that you're looking for. And it's a volunteer first program as well, as in it's made for the volunteer to actually put in the hours via mobile, via the widgets, via all the different ways that I said to, to actually increase technology adoption. So it started with volunteer recognition right here in the city of Oakland, but there's been you know, a lot of different use cases that have come in. Uh, for example, uh, grant auditing. Uh, if you guys know World Relief, they're a refugee placement organization. They use Track It Forward to, to audit their grants. Um, we have a lot of private schools and charter schools that are doing it for tuition offsets, and we have also have cooperatives like co-working spaces. The Hub Oakland uses it right down the road to manage the work trade program. So today, uh, there are 500 organizations using Track It Forward, and I pulled this number just yesterday. 3.72 million volunteer hours have been tracked so far. So if you divide 3.72 million by 500, the organizations that are using it, it's really solving a very big problem for those organizations. So how I need help. I'm a developer. I'm, I'm no, no nonprofit guru. I'm no business person. But this is obviously a product that is solving a real problem for a lot of nonprofits out there. And of course, you know, Track Forward needs more customers, but more deeply, and this is what I'm appealing to all of you, is how do you price a nonprofit product where you keep it affordable for all those grassroots organizations and be respectful of nonprofit budgets? Also, what is the sales cycle of a nonprofit like? 
How does it work? Is it, does it happen yearly? Does it happen annually? And lastly, what's the best way to get exposure to other organizations who need volunteer time track? Those are the biggest problems, and thank you all so much for hearing about Track Forward. Thank you. Any questions for Track It Forward? Right here? I would say Tuesday is the day of giving. East Bay Gives, mm -hmm. hashtag, for you know all kinds of nonprofits. I would just Google bomb the heck out of your app. <laughs> in, in, in Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday next week with that hashtag. All right, sounds good, thank you. Back there. Can you tie it in with uh, other systems like Salesforce for reporting purposes? Let me just repeat the question. Uh, so the question was, can we tie it in with Salesforce or other systems? Yeah, Salesforce has this volunteer product that they've spun off, or I think they, they kind of shut it down and restarted. Unfortunately, all the nonprofits that are using us leave Salesforce because they don't want to use Salesforce because it's so clunky, nobody actually uses those tools. But in terms of tying it in, um, it's, a good, it's a good suggestion. Um, that, that might be a revenue opportunity. Thank you. Other questions or comments out there? Anybody else have answers to his questions? So the question was about uh, thought, his thoughts about pricing. Yeah, so the pricing right now, um, as it exists right now, if you go on the website, it's free for organizations under 50 volunteers. So for a lot of those nonprofit uh, or grassroots organizations, but as you scale up to like 100 volunteers, 200 volunteers, we talk about $15 a month, $20 a month, and it goes up from there. And right now, after it hits the 1,000 mark, you have more than 1,000 volunteers, that's where you get into, I'd say, custom pricing, which um, is based off of the needs of that organization. Right over there. Maybe you could tie in you know, payment with how much additional hours the organization is getting after using the system. And so that, um, you know, if, say it's before and after the system, you get a thousand more hours and, and you price it per for percentage of that additional hour. Good suggestion, thank you. So uh, nonprofits, if you have a volunteer, um, 501c3s are required to track in-kind donations and volunteer hours as um, sort of a give back to the, to the organization. So I wonder if there's some opportunities to, to say, we have saved or provided um, $5 million in in-kind donation and volunteer hours. And I think if, if you say that to a nonprofit to say, we're saving you money and actually that in-kind donation money is, is uh, booked in, in the accounting system as a non-cash revenue. Uh, it basically zeroes out the pocket accounting geek talk. But basically, if you tell a nonprofit, we are going to help you with your in-kind donation tracking and your compliance, because to comply with 501c3 rules, you also have to track and be transparent and report on your, your in-kind donation. So that would be music to a CFO's ears. Um, I, I think that's... Yeah, let's go into that a little That's bit later. Potential. Thank you. Yeah. His I'm name is Sergio. Above. Sergio. Cool. <laughs> <laughs> but cool. I know some. Great. Thank you very much for joining us, and James will be here later. Thank you.